This is a Toyota Land Cruiser. It's got all-wheel drive, a diesel motor, and some quite rabid fans all over the world. It's also massive. Am I small? Am I far away? That's for you to decide. Now, before this week, I'd never played in a Land Cruiser, and I'm curious to see what all the fuss is about. So in the interest of learning and science, let's find out together. What's all the fuss really about then? Well, the Land Cruiser has been around since, if you listen to some corners of the internet, the dawn of time. And on that first day, someone with a beard and a fleece was using one to drive up a mountain. Actually, it's been around since the middle of the last century. The Land Cruiser originally came from a Japanese military application, which was inspired by the Willys Jeep. Now, you know the Willys Jeep. If you've seen a World War II film, it's the car that all the American GIs roll around in. You probably had a plastic one to go with your little plastic army men when you were a kid. It's also the same Jeep that was the inspiration behind the original Land Rover. Now, if I was the bloke that came up with the Willys Jeep, I'd be very flattered that my creation had inspired so many wonderful things, but I'd also be, well, a bit miffed. Over the years, there have been lots and lots of iterations of the Land Cruiser. Big ones, small ones, commercial ones, passenger ones, racing ones, all sorts of Land Cruiser fun. Some of the old ones are a touch box on wheels, but have a look at the J20, 30, 40 and even 50. They're pretty cool. Land Cruisers in the UK at least, well I always thought they were bought by the diehards, the, the adventurers, the ones that know about Land Rover plushness but they don't really care for it. They see the Range Rover as a sort of toy and they know that in the Cotswolds, their Land Cruiser won't have as much cred as a shiny Range Rover or Range Rover Sport, but they know something that the Range Rover mob probably won't care to admit. Toyotas don't go pop at all. So if you don't want to worry about electric things going bang or bits of trim not being quite right, you buy a Toyota. Here's a fun thing. Before the pandemic, I went to Saudi Arabia and I went playing in a bunch of sand dunes. And you know what I didn't see there? Any Range Rovers, nor anything German. It was a sea of full fat land cruisers. This one isn't the full size one because, well, we don't get it in the UK, but still pretty big. What about the Land Cruiser we get in the UK? Well, I have a 2.8 litre engine under my hood, powered by diesel, and that comes with 201 horsepower. Yeah, lots of power. With the automatic gearbox fitted, it takes just under 10 seconds to get to 62 miles an hour. And if you're feeling industrious, so, you know, want to try and break the speed limit on the motorway, it'll do 108 miles an hour. Brilliant. In reality, on the road, this is not a very good car. The steering is slow and sloppy. The suspension is wallowy. You pitch into a corner and you feel the whole car lean. And it's not very confidence inspiring, especially when you have other motors kind of in the sector that this is in, not necessarily the price point, but the sector. Big SUVs designed to do chunky stuff. They feel a little bit more sure-footed. This, you, you kind of, you turn and you feel the car move, but you're not necessarily sure that what you've done will translate into steering. Its gearbox, a six-speed auto in this case, is um, it's a bit slow, it's a bit slush boxy, it's a bit, it's old. It feels quite old. And again, agricultural. That 2.8 litre diesel motor, again, it sounds all clattery and horrible. This isn't a smooth Luxo barge SUV, despite what appearances show it to be. Or, well, it hopes to be. In this invincible spec, I've got wood on my steering wheel. I have leather seats, which is all very exciting. And the, the nav does lots of things. It's all touchscreen and swipey, and that's just great. But as a car to drive, it's not very good. It's not very fast. The gearbox is slow. The suspension is wallowy and a bit rubbish. And it has drive mode, so I can put it in eco, so I don't use as much diesel. That still, on the motorway drive the other day, got me 28 mpg. And I've been driving around country lanes today, and I've got 24.3 mpg. It's not brilliant. I can put it in sport mode, which 
appears to, well, it, it makes more noise. The throttle's a little sharper, I'll give it that, but there's not much for it to work with, so you just kind of, it just makes lots more noise. <laughs> <laughs> rather than translating into oh this is a thrilling experience isn't this exciting but this isn't a car about sport it's honest and it's honest about what it is and what it is is not brilliant until you put it in the right situation which means for the likes of you or I most of us you probably look at it and go Ugh, that's not really for me but for some people, this is perfect. You put your foot down, noise happens. What you get is a driving experience. Not necessarily a bad one, not necessarily a great one, but it's an experience. I was driving this through London and I felt, well, one, I felt like, oh, hi, I'm part of the problem. That's why there's so much traffic. One person in a massive car driving down tiny streets. I was looking in the mirrors, making sure I was still in the lanes. I was won wondering if I was going to clatter someone just by virtue of existing. It is massive. Thank God it's got a rear camera so I can see out the back, because otherwise I'd be parking 6,000 feet away from any wall, other car, anything. It's just so big. It does, thankfully, translate into space inside. There's loads of room in the back. There's loads of room everywhere. I don't feel hemmed in. But still, I, I just, I'm not a big man and I feel even smaller driving this car. I feel minuscule, like a dot in the universe. As insignificant as humankind is to the number of stars in the sky or grains of sand in the beach, that's how I feel inside this massive, colossal car. It's huge. Stupid vehicle but kind of cool for it. And what about the look? It's not what you'd call pretty, and the interior doesn't look all that special for a car in this case that's just shy of £60,000. A smaller, less well-trimmed car kicks off at a bit over 40, but that's still no small change. It's here that the Land Cruiser starts to look a little bit hopeless, but that shouldn't be the case. Unless you own a farm, have vast tracts of land, or just regularly take shortcuts through people's fields without their knowledge, you're probably not going to need a Land Cruiser or particularly want one. But if you want to go exploring, and I mean properly exploring, climbing mountains, all that stuff, get yourself a Land Cruiser. You'll have some fun. Allow me to demonstrate with shoes. Now, for example, take this trainer. It's a mighty fine looking thing. It's very purple. People will comment on how lovely and shiny it is. It's ideal for the street on a nice sunny day, maybe even a gentle jog if you're late meeting someone. However, the moment the rain starts to fall, your suede will be ruined, it'll get muddy, it itself will no longer be pretty, it'll be tarnished, it's rubbish when the weather turns foul. When that happens, however, you probably want one of these. This is a boot. It looks all right, but when the rain comes, your feet will stay dry and it'll collect a bit of a patina. You can clean it off if you want to, but you don't have to. It can be that rugged thing that goes anywhere with you, a dependable friend. In this world, the Toyota, in the nicest possible way, is a boot. The Toyota Land Cruiser then, what is it all about? Well, if you take it apart and look at its constituent bits, it's massive, it's not very fast, it's not very good to drive, and well, it's just not very good. But put all that together, and it's quite a charming thing. And it's charming in that not only is it a bit weird, but also you know that if the world ended tomorrow, that would be the last thing standing. Well, and a Hilux. I understand the fuss. Hello, we're just filming the Land Cruiser film that you just watched a bit of filmception going on. It's a cold, miserable, blustery day out in the countryside. Now, if you liked a big 4 before film, might like a different one, say on a Land Rover Defender. Otherwise, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and um, yeah, I might see you next time but I might not be able to get home because uh, Reggie's just stolen my ride. Brilliant. See you next time. <laughs>